Hans Georg von Friedeberg was born on July 15, 1895, in what was then Strasbourg in the German imperial territory of Alsace-Lorraine, and what is today Strasbourg in France. He came from a strong military background given that his father was the Prussian officer, Karl von Friedeberg. Having von in their name meant the family had some nobility. Hans Georg joined the Imperial Navy as a sea cadet or sea cadet in 1914, months before the outbreak of World War I. He was soon promoted to the rank of Fenrik Zursee, or Officer Aspirant, serving on the dreadnought Kronprinz. Hans Georg took part in the gigantic Battle of Jutland against the Royal Navy's Grand Fleet in 1916. He would then join the U-boat division as a lieutenant, or Leutnant Zursee, serving on board SMU-114 from June 1918 until the end of the war in November that year. Hans Georg enjoyed various commissions during the 1920s, including being an instructor at the German Navy's torpedo school for a couple of months in 1925. He enjoyed a stellar career in the German Navy in the years between the two world wars, making first lieutenant or Oberleutnant Zur See in 1920, and captain lieutenant or Kapitän Leutnant in 1925 followed by Corvetten Capitan in 1933 and Forgotten Capitan in 1937. By the outbreak of World War II in September 1939, Hans Georg held the highest non-admiral rank, that of Capitan Zursee. His rise was nothing short of meteoric. His first admiralty, that of Counter Admiral or Rear Admiral, was granted in 1942, after which he rose to Vice Admiral or Vice Admiral in February 1943, Admiral in April 1943, and finally Grand Admiral or General Admiral on May 1, 1945. We've noted this long list of military ranks awarded to Hans Georg von Friedeberg for a good reason. It's a testament to how well respected he was in the Navy, and more importantly, how much respect he commanded in the military high command. Perhaps most important of all, it further reflects how well regarded he was in political circles, that is where the real power was in Nazi Germany. And very importantly, Hans Georg was a fervent Nazi. He was a true believer in Hitler and the ideology espoused by the Nazis. That too played a very significant role in his success within the Navy, as well as the political prestige he would eventually yield, even if the latter was short-lived. 1939 was a pivotal year for von Friedeberg as it saw him made leader of submarines in February of that year, followed by commandant of the U-boat, U-27 in June, and then staff officer with special duties with the leader of submarines in July, followed by acting leader of submarines by the time war broke out in September. That effectively made him the second in command for all U-boats, with only the legendary Karl Dönitz as his superior. It was in this role that he oversaw German U-boat training, as well as deployment of U-boat bases in German-occupied France. He was the man that oversaw U-boat picket lines, or wolf packs as they were known, to find and attack Allied convoys in what was the famous Battle of the Atlantic. Two years later he was made second Admiral of Submarines, followed by commanding Admiral of Submarines in February 1945. When Adolf Hitler committed suicide in his Berlin bunker on April 30, 1945, Hans Georg had gone beyond the U-boat division and been made the commander-in-chief of the entire Navy or Kriegsmarine. Karl Dönitz had been made Reich president as a result of Hitler's suicide, and so von Friedeberg rose to the highest position within the Navy. However, Hitler's demise marked the beginning of the quick end of Nazi Germany, explaining why von Friedeberg held his post for just 22 days. Germany was done and so too was Hans Georg von Friedeberg's incredible career within its military command. It was those final days of the war in May 1945 for which von Friedeberg is most famous. That's because in his role as commander-in-chief, von Friedeberg was chosen by Dönitz to be the leader of the negotiations delegation for surrender. The man to which von Friedeberg and other high-ranking Germans would surrender would be Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, famously nicknamed as Monty. There are various photographs available online showing von Friedeberg as part of the German delegation surrendering to Montgomery. That momentous meeting took place in a field in Lüneburg, a town in northern Germany. It's alleged that Monty took one look at the motley crew of Germans and muttered, So, what is this about? Of paramount importance was the so-called instrument of surrender, 
or the terms by which the Nazis would surrender to the British and, in effect, the Allies. That instrument, signed on May 7, 1945, in a dingy cellar in Reims, France, marked the end of hostilities in the North Atlantic. It is known that von Friedeberg, although a proud Nazi, pushed for the surrender so that the loss of lives and destruction could stop. He was no doubt very conflicted by it, but clearly chose to do what was best for the German people and ultimately all of Europe. He knew it was over for his beloved Third Reich. After Reims, von Friedeberg traveled to Berlin to sign the official surrender on May 8, 1945. He signed on behalf of the Kriegsmarine, whilst Colonel General Hans-Jürgen Stumpf did so on behalf of the Air Force, or Luftwaffe and General Feldmarschall Wilhelm Keitel signed for the Army, or Wehrmacht. In doing so, von Friedeberg would be the only German official that signed both official surrender declarations. The surrenders also marked the end of the short-lived Flensburg government, which had been formed in the aftermath of Hitler's death. Even by surrendering, all the Flensburg leaders were arrested by the Allies, von Friedeberg included. He was fearful of reprisals by the advancing Soviet forces, and so decided to kill himself by taking poison on May 23, 1945, in the town of flensburg mürwik Karl Dönitz himself paid due homage to Hans-Georg von Friedeberg in his memoirs Zehn Jahre und Zwanzig Tage, or Ten Years and Twenty Days. Dönitz made it clear that he considered Hans-Georg a longtime friend and trusted subordinate. In it, Dönitz wrote, Friedeberg was a most capable officer, a particularly gifted organizer, and a man endowed with an exceptional capacity for work. Dönitz would then say, when he came to me, however, in spite of the fact that he was too senior and too old for the post, he started as a U-boat captain and then joined my staff, like any other officer coming from surface vessels to the U-boat arm. He required some time to get used to the completely different conditions. When he did so, however, he became a submariner in body and soul. In his memoirs, Dönitz mentioned von Friedeberg's Wolfpack tactics in the open Atlantic in glowing terms, commenting about the strategic prowess that Hans-Georg showed during the Battle of the Atlantic. Dönitz referred to his friend as the box spanner of the U-boat division, whatever that might have meant. As a final aside, it's worth noting the ultimate irony of Hans-Georg von Friedeberg, and that is that the dedicated Nazi had a Jewish mother. The only reason that he was spared any persecution for being part Jewish was that he was shielded by none other than Heinrich Himmler, the man who was head of the SS and Gestapo and Hitler's de facto second-in-command during the war. This interesting fact was revealed in Mark Brienrig's book, Hitler's Jewish Soldiers, The Untold Story of Nazi Racial Laws, and Men of Jewish Descent in the German Military. Nazi Germany was full of such secrets and obscene ironies, of course, and now we turn to the son, Ludwig Ferdinand von Friedeberg. It should be noted that his military career was far less successful and long than his father's, but he's still worth exploring. Ludwig von Friedeberg was born on May 21, 1924, in Wilhelmshaven, Rüstringen, a coastal town in Lower Saxony, Germany. Coincidentally, the two towns merged in 1937 to become the United City of Wilhelmshaven. Today, Wilhelmshaven is Germany's only deep water port, as well as home to the country's largest naval base. Ludwig Ferdinand joined the Kriegsmarine in 1941. It was the middle of the Second World War, and so advancements were accelerated, allowing him to go through U-boat and officer training from May 1941 to June 1943. Upon completion of his officer's course, he was immediately assigned to be second watch officer, or 2WO, on board the U-boat U-548. He had one patrol on that U-boat, which lasted 96 days and which sank the Canadian Corvette, HMCS Valleyfield. Thereafter, Ludwig was promoted to first watch officer, or 1WO, but he never again went out on patrol with that U-boat. It was in September 1944 that von Friedeberg was promoted to commander of the veteran boat U-155. Ludwig was merely 20 years old when given that commission, making him the youngest ever commander of a U-boat. He left the port of Lorient in German-occupied France on September 9, 1944, delivering the boat to the port of Flensburg 43 days later. Ironically, that was the same town that would serve as the seat of the short-lived Flensburg government, of which his father would play such a pivotal role just eight months later. 
Ludwig Ferdinand then undertook U-boat commander courses with the 24th Flotilla between November 1944 and January 1945, followed by U-boat familiarization, known as Baubelerung, for smaller 23 electroboats between February and April of 1945. He was then given command of U-4710, a new type 23 electro submarine, but never had a chance to go out on patrol with it, as the war ended a few days later. He was detained by the Allies and only released on September 12, 1947, making him among the last German officers to be released by Allied forces. Before his arrest, Ludwig Ferdinand made sure to scuttle his U-boat in Gelting Bay on May 5, 1945, as part of what was known as Operation Regenbogen. Ludwig Ferdinand was very different to his father in one critical aspect. He was never a staunch Nazi. This became apparent in the post-war years during which time Ludwig Ferdinand gained public stature in Germany as a well-respected sociologist and politician. However, far from being an extreme right-winger like his father was, Ludwig Ferdinand was a prominent member of the center-left Social Democratic Party, or SPD. He would go on to serve between as Minister for Culture in the state of Hesse from 1969 to 1974, during which time he also served as a member of the Federal Council for the Federal Republic of Germany. In 1986, he was appointed as an honorary senator of the University of Kassel and received a prestigious Goethe plaque from the city of Frankfurt am Main in 1994. Ludwig Ferdinand von Friedeberg died on May 17, 2010, in Frankfurt at the age of 85. He is not known to have spoken or written publicly about his father or his time as the youngest man to ever command a U-boat. In the end, Hans Georg and Ludwig Ferdinand von Friedeberg were two very different men who ultimately led very different lives. The father died by suicide, an embittered and scared Nazi prisoner of war, while the son died an accomplished sociologist and liberal politician. What did tie the two men together were U-boats the division of the German Navy that continues to capture our collective imagination.